face. Chandrakanti, more than Chandrakanti, one of the friends of Srimati Radhika Shri. Chandrakantaki. Gaur Sundar is best now. Gaur Sundar Prabhu ki. Nitai Gaur Prabhu. Nitai Das Prabhu. Nitai Prabhu ki. Gadadhar Das, Gadadhar Prabhu ki Jai! Gadadhar. Gaur Gadadhar. Radha Rani Jai. Oh, Radha Srimati Radhika Dasi. Radhika Dasi. Radhika, Radhika. Hari Ho! Shakti Nandan Prabhu. Oh, same name. Sachin Nandan is best. Sachin Nandan Prabhu ki. Govinda Dasi. Oh, very good. Govinda. Govinda Mohini. Govinda Mohini. Taraka Dutna. Tulashi Devi ki. Devaki Goodman. Devaki Best Man. Devaki Devi Ki. Shelly. Shelly Sinha. Shelly Sinha. Shelly Sinha. Partner. Sunanda. Sunanda Devi Ki. Short form is the good name. Shelly. Sunanda Devi Ki. Sunanda. From today you are Sunanda. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. His word. Listen, today, as like Pajal's splendid sapphire, scattered by sea waves on the shore, like a great forest, of many days to launch it, seen from a cave in the notch of a mountain, and like an intoxicated elephant, being deep in a bag of gold, your job is to print up procession to the nature. And as the entire universe became filled with jubilant calls of joy, jive from mouths of men in every direction. And as blissful hearted devotees filled the directions with a tumult of Bhagavad Kirtan, and as women filled the directions with shouts of joy, and as there was a deafening tumult of sweet mudras, vigorous patahas, mahapanas, many dakas and bukharas, and deep berries among preachies and devotees, I was suddenly approached by Lord Jagannath's servant, King Pachapurudra, whose heart was wounded by the disappearance of Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya, and who said to me, O oh, playwright, this is the same all-powerful Lord Jagannath. This is the same Ratha Yantra festival. This is, this is the same Gumbicha temple. These are the same pilgrims come from all directions to see the Lord. This is the same garden that eclipses the beauties of Mount Amandam. Still, without Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I think everything here is a desert. To please me, Write a sweet, beautiful play, fragrant with the virtues of affection of Lord Chaitanya, the best of sannyasis. Except for our friend's words, or a play filled with his qualities, we have no way to bear the pain of not seeing our dear Lord. 
I must do it. This is wonderful. Visible everywhere. The smokeless fire of cosmic destruction delights the saintly devotees and burns the locust demons. Hearing the fire's heart would burn it. At the time of creation, the Lord put many coverings around the universe. The king was once like that fire. At first the form of great chivalrous power, gradually increasing love for the Lord, plunged the king into an ocean of peace, washing away all passion and ignorance. Knowledge made him the personification of peace. Now in his heart, he no longer desires material things. Shaking all doubts and thus making this life a success, for the king's good, I will now present this play named Sri Chaitanya Chandradaya, The Moonrise of Sri Chaitanya, which destroys the darkness of ignorance in the heart, and which was written by the poet Paramananda Kavikandi, to whom the Lord was kind, and who is the son of Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya's dear associate, Shivananda Singh. Oh, oh, here, here! Oh, oh, here, here, here! Wonderful. Gentle one, what is it? This, this, Lord Jagannath Rathyatra, some unhappy men are crying. As if they think the world is a cauldron of darkness. They said, Can you listen to this, Lord Jagannath Rathyatra? even now be staying in your mother's womb. Listen, its wonderful root, the great sage, Madhavendra Puri, the crest jewel of sannyasis, its new sprout, Srila Doita, who is famous in the three worlds, its first branch, Avadut Nitananda, its other branches, Sriman Vakashar Pandit, and other sweet devotees, its flower blossoming, devotional service, its fruit, sincere love, its highest branches, breaking through the boundaries of the material worlds and providing a place for the nest of the two playful birds, Radha and Krishna, who remain without either being separated, and its shade a resting place for those who travel on the path of repeated birth and death. The Chaitanya path of Rumachu grows on this earth to fulfill the devotee's desires. What has this incarnation found? This purpose is far from what ordinary people can dance. Gentle one, listen. Teach the many activities of devotional service, which begin with Nam Sankirtan, which are the highest goal of life, which are described by San Sanandan Kumar and other sages, which are the worship of the Supreme Truth, who has transcendental qualities, who is the supremely opulent personality of Godhead, George Krishna, who eternally enjoys his transcendental power, and whose form is eternal and full of transcendental knowledge and bliss. For this reason, the Supreme Personality of God has appeared as Sri Krishna and Shaitanya. This is not understood by the impersonalist philosophers who claim that the supreme goal of life is to merge into the quality of Brahman and who are haunted by the ghosts of their own foolish theories of the meaning of all the scriptures. The master in this incarnation, did Lord Hari write any books to teach this? Although the Lord did not personally write any scriptures, as the all-pervading super soul, he inspired others to write. He is not limited by time, place, or the need to directly teach anyone. Oh, no, Master. Why does not everyone appreciate his voice? Yeah. How can those who make a host of material desires their masters follow the spiritual path? Down by material desires, they take shelter of many different philosophies. Ah, oh, so it's 
devotional service, which even the authors of scripture cannot understand, creates wonderful transcendental knowledge, and therefore must bear in personal liberation as its fruit. So, what is the difference then between devotional service and personalism? When one is actually advanced and takes pleasure in chanting the Lord's holy name, who is very dear to him, he becomes agitated and loudly chants the holy name. He also laughs, cries, becomes agitated, and chants just like a madman, not caring for outsiders. Devotional service, which begins with chanting the Lord's holy name, and which makes one free from sin, makes one fall in love with the sin. It is each one the Lord's personal associate. The Lord explains, My devotees always see the smiling face of my form, with eyes like the rising sun. They like to see my various transcendental forms, which are all benevolent, and they also talk favorably with me. On seeing my charming forms, smiling and attractive, and hearing my very pleasing words, the pure devotee almost loses other consciousness. His senses are free from all other engagements, and he becomes absorbed in devotional service. Thus, in spite of his unwillingness, he gets liberation without separate endeavor. This is the liberation the devotees attain. They do not attain impersonal liberation. Lord Kapila explains, When the service spirit is engaged in devotional service to the personality of Godhead without any motive, that is far better even than impersonal salvation. In Kali Yuga, by chanting the Lord's holy name, one attains the ecstatic love known as Yaki, which eclipses all other gold in life. So your words are surprising. The holy name of the Lord certainly does grant liberation. The scripture says that by calling out O Narayan, as one dies, one attains liberation. Here the word liberation means becoming an associate of the Lord. Scripture says Ajamil regained his original spiritual body, which was a body appropriate for an associate of the Lord. This, the philosophy of Sri Chaitanya, defeats all other philosophies. The pious and the wise agree with him. His incarnation has made Kali Yuga auspicious. And that being, Scripture says, O King, in Kali Yuga, most of the people, their hearts broken with offenses, do not worship the infallible superiors. He is the master of all the world, and before his low speed, the dead gods which control the free will of God. In this way, the Chaitanya That describes previous Kali Yugas, before Lord Chaitanya descended to this world. The scripture also says, in this Kali Yuga, the Lord, out of special mercy to his devotees, will dispel the unhappiness of the people born in this fallen age propagating the hearing and chanting of his own glories. Scripture again says, O King, in Kali Yuga many people will become devotees of Lord Narayana. The people of Sat Yuga and other Yugas will yearn for a birth in Kali Yuga. These and other statements describing the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in future words. day by day. But how is it possible for wicked Kali Yuga to overcome they who have taken shelter of Lord Vishnu's feet? Who are you to insult me with the word wicked and compare me to the moon? <laughs> Gentlemen, as we speak of him, cloud-hearted, merciless Kali is coming with his dear friend in religion. Let's leave. spoke the truth. And what was that? He said the waning moon may decrease day by day, but how is it possible for wicked Kali Yuga to overcome they who have taken shelter of Lord Vishnu's feet? Friend, King of Kali Yuga, this wretch has insulted you by calling you wicked. Sinful, wretched playwright, listen! You have insulted Kali, who uprooted the monarch religion and his soldiers, purity, good conduct, equanimity, self-control, discrimination, 
and other virtues, who blinded religion's friends that purify others with a glance, and who has me as his obedient servant. Stand, sinner! Stand! Stand! You may say that wherever religion is, there is Krishna, and wherever Krishna is, there is victory. But when there is no religion, where is Krishna, who alone can destroy Kali? Friend, don't criticize the playwright. Consider this. Friend, my time is now past. A boy has taken my powers away, just as a poison herb destroyed the great serpent Takshika. King of the Yuga, who is this boy? Is he a wretched murderer? Has he killed the entire earth? Neither. He is not to be feared. Born in Navadri, as the son of Sachi Devi and Jagannath Mitra Purandara, this boy has cut my work into pieces. <laughs> King of Kali Yuga. Out of fear of the splendor of the ferocious son of your powerful arms, the bull of religion, who has only one leg left, is now silent as an owl, hiding in a mountain cave. Your feet are served by many servants like myself. How is it that your mind has become so bewildered that you fear a Brahmin boy? Friend, he is not just a Brahmin boy. He is a boy that is the master of all the demigods purifying the world and placing in its heart the nectar teachings of devotion to Lord Haru. Playing as a boy and splendid as a golden lotus, Lord Hari has incarnated the Brahmin's home. By taking birth during an eclipse of the full moon, he tricked the people of the world to chant Lord Hari's name at his birth. You are bewildered. It is like the Kakatalia Nyai. It is only a coincidence, although you think it is not. Listen. Oh, listen. You are very powerful. You have many strong helpers. What is this sprout of a Brahmin boy in comparison to you, whose roots are so old and firm? How is it that you've become so bewildered that you fear a boy? Friends, hear the truth. Time, place, Age and family have no meaning to him. He has come to this world of his own accord, like a newly rising sun who leaves the blinding darkness. He is not without helpers. Before he himself came, he sent his new associates to the earth. Adwaita Charya is the incarnation of Lord Shiva. Nityananda Avadut is glorious Lord Sankarshan. Srivas, the Tilag Mark of the Brahmin who is accompanied by Sri Kanta, Sri Pati, and Sri Rama, is the incarnation of Narada Muni, Acharya Rata, Haridas, Murari, Gangadas, Dava Khanet, Vigyanini, Vasudev, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, Bhattacharya, Sri Asukumbar, Damodar, Shankar, Jagannanda, and many others. <laughs> Reservoirs of love. Expert at tasting the nectar dances of many kinds of pastimes. And friends of the Lord since childhood have come to the earth to save the world. But what is the proof that he is gone? Friend, because he is full of bliss. A supreme personality of God that attracts everyone's heart. It is an extraordinary nature. Supremely blissful. He can make the living entities also blissful. Just as a wealthy person can make someone else wealthy also. This boy fills everyone's heart with wonder. That is the sign of the Supreme Personality of God. Ha! Even in childhood, his virtues, beginning with profound thoughtfulness, peacefulness, perfect memory, intelligence, happiness, wisdom, sweetness, and love attract everyone. With this proof, who will not accept that he is more additional? He is not the only one. Some people are extraordinary. No, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, know that all beautiful, glorious, and mighty creations spring from the spark of my spirit. According to the Lord's own words, the presence of millions of great qualities in others only proves his greatness. We ourselves are proof. <laughs> For we do not fear any conditions. <laughs> <laughs> King of the Yuga, 
I heard he's married. When the supreme personality of Godhead descends to this material world, his potency, beautiful goddess Lakshmi, also descends. Imitating the pastimes of ordinary men, he accepted her, stayed with her for some days, and then sent her far from the eyes of this world. She also has a human life form. Scripture says, when the Supreme Personality of Godhead assumes a demigod form, Goddess Lakshmi assumes a demigod form. And when the Lord assumes a human life form, she assumes a human life form. He will marry beautiful Vishnu Priya, the partial incarnation of Uday, and then, teaching the importance of renunciation, while still young, he will be. His elder brother, Vishwaru, was Lord Sankarshan descended to this world. Not marrying, Vishwaru accepted sannyas, gave his personal powers to Ishvarapuri, and disappeared. This is a great planet. <laughs> <laughs> great cleverness, I should be able to dissuade him, but my heart is withered. Oh, my limbs are weary. My memory is broken. For this calamity, there is no cause other than the holy name of the Lord? Friends, no, no, that I have seen it myself. Friend, there is a way that we can defeat him, save ourselves from misfortune. And make us happy. Friend, what is that? Friend, nothing is impossible for lust. And your other generals. The strength of their arms has placed the entire world under your umbrella. And now that they have conquered all four directions, they have returned. Each having conquered a different direction, they have removed all thorns of opposition to your rule. And now, all doubts shaken away, they will return, O oh Lord, to your feet. Let us use them all at once to defeat him. I will describe their prowess. <laughs> the god of lust is famous for conquering the three worlds. By the strength of his arms, Brahma approached his own daughter. And Shiva ran after Bohini. What are other tiny people? They're like the pet kittens of women. Friend, you don't know his power. The god of lust was himself defeated when he tried to conquer Lord Mirai. No conditioned soul has the power to be ruled in Lord Ali. I sent my generals to conquer him, and they promised as soon as his childhood was over they would. But it was not possible. In the prime of his youth, he left his young wife, splendid as God is not me, and protecting his own religious teachings, went to Gaia and performed funeral <laughs> rites for his father. There, he accepted as his guru, Ishvara Puri, who by faith I command. Sri <sighs> Chaitanya, the master of all self-control yogis, then accepted the ten-syllable mantra from his guru, who had learned it from Madhavendra Puri. Then he returned home. Now, in the company of his dear friends, headed by Srivas, Rama, and Haridas, by singing, dancing, Acting in religious plays <laughs> and crying, <laughs> he plunges the blue worlds and oceans of bliss. How can the god of lust even approach him? Friend, don't talk in that way. They who by practicing very terrible austerities, following vows, meditating in yogic trance, controlling the mind and senses, wisely spat out, even in the post of Brahma, the opulences of this world, and Easily conquering the unconquerable enemies, headed by the god of lust, fell from the slight touch of anger. How will he defeat anger? Friends, what can pathetic anger do? <laughs> to two impious, miser Brahmin brothers named Jagai and Madhai, whose hearts burn with the five great sins, who troubled everyone, who stole from others, who ate the drums of lies, and whose hearts became more polluted day by day. He was kind, called for them, and 
when they were brought before him, said, You are both poisoned by many sins. Please give me all the sins you have committed. And as stunned with wonder, they said, We give them to you. And poured water from their hands. And as they both became fulgent, trembled, wept with bodily hair standing erect, became plunged in the waters of bliss, and with throats choked with emotion chanted, Krishna, Krishna. And as by engaging in eternal devotional service, their lust and other vices left them, and they now walked on the path of the great devotees. And as everyone that saw this became filled with bliss, free of all doubts, and motionless as a painted picture, Lord Chaitanya attracted and charmed them all. With a sidelong glance, he lightens all sins, and tears apart lust and all other vices in the hearts of others. How can he be overcome with anger? Friend, listen. I hear tumultuous sounds of bliss from Srivasa's house. Oh, I can guess these are limitless and glorious pastimes that fill the heart with wonder. Friend, listen. The blissful calls of the Brahmin's young wives. The sounds of jai, jai. The playing of many instruments. And the unrestrained conch shells and bells are a great festival like a blood collector. Oh, I must get a closer look. Rama, quickly bring the Sparga and other things. Sri Pati, quickly bring 108 excellent new jars. Sri Kanta, from every direction, have the Brahmins and good women bring water from the Ganges. Friend, I see Srivas giving duties to his brothers. I think the great Abhishek festival of ecstatic Lord Vishnamaradi, who is now revealing that he is the Supreme, has begun. If he is the independent, supreme personality of Godhead, then why is he overcome with ecstasy? Friend, because although he is always the supreme personality of Godhead, because he is supremely independent, he does not always reveal his identity to others. By his own wish, he sometimes performs actions that seem material. The wise call these his sweet pastimes. Friend, look, look! In Srivast Brahman's home, which has become like Ilavrita Varsha, splendid with waves of light from the rising sun on the peak of Golden Mount Meru, Lord Chaitanya is a madman overcome with bliss, and as the splendor of sudden lightning enters the deity room, sends the throne of the Shalabra of Shila and other deities, pushes them aside, sits down, and is surrounded by all the devotees as they hastily run to and fro, expertly bringing articles of worship, shedding tears, the hairs on their bodies erect, and their hearts pure from defeating the end of this material desire. Rama, bring pure fragrant water. Mukunda, arrange the paraphernalia for the bathing ceremony. Kadarhar, bring the clothing, garlands, ornaments, and other things. Friend, look, look! Carrying auspicious jars in their hands, the women come and go. They go from the town to the Ganges, and from the Ganges shore to the town. In their words are his pastimes, and their eyes tears, while their bodies trembling. On their braids looseness, and on their cheeks hairs erect in ecstasy. Oh, this is amazing! It is said that loosened braids are a symptom of lust. Wherever do white women walk, their comedy conquers. Can a general conquer alone without a conquering army? Loosened braids agitate men and women whose hearts are filled with lust. But they do not agitate they who are free of material desire. Wonderful. As water continually falling from Brahma's Kamandalu, 
Or as the swiftly flowing heavenly Ganges on always flooded Mount Sumeru, the oddly shaped water flowing from Lord Gorunga's body floods the four directions of the world. Before the lotus feet of Sri Vishwamar, who is now bathed, his body dried with a towel, splendidly dressed in clean garments, his lotus feet washed, and his fair splendor rivaling the glory of the world. All the devotees, aware that he is both different and not different from everything, overcome with love, and according to their own powers, place gold, jewels, belts, and many valuable offerings. Friend, this is greed's opportunity. Greed, which destroys patience, hates happiness, and stops humility, will somehow defeat it. Even Lord Vishnu became greedy for the goddess of fortune. And the great Kastuba gem, cheering from the milk ocean. It's not like that. Look, look, it is so. He does not speak, he does not see, he does not hear anything. Stunned with bliss, he shines with splendor. Friend, these are the actions of a madman. <laughs> Powerful madness makes the eloquent silent, the sighted blind, the hearing deaf, and the wise foolish. What calamity does it not bring? <laughs> Why worry? If there is one fault, there may also be other faults. This is confirmed in the words Ekta Yoga Nadrishtanam Sahaba Priviti Sahaba Nivritihi. Your Lieutenant Envy, which pollutes the heart with an intolerance of others' good fortune, creates cruelty and deceit, who burns as a fire in a tree hollow who turns those who it defeats into demons, and who upsets the entire world, hides within him. Oh, oh, Adwaita. These 54 hours have passed for him as a moment. Now that he is in his ecstasy, how can we tiny people continue to serve him? But listen, listen, the devotees cannot bear his power and opulence. That's what Srivast is saying. I heard. Madness is in their hearts. And delusion. <laughs> if he really is in ecstasy, he cannot leave his trance. Madness and pride in his heart, he falsely thinks the world is a blade of straw. If they are not bewildered, then why do his followers take his words seriously? Out of love. Oh, then you say when it is directed toward ordinary people, it is delusion. But when it is directed toward anyone else, toward the great souls, it is love. Fool! That is the way conditioned souls think. Because they are conditioned, they think one is great and another small. Oh, what is this? All the devotees sit by a Dwayta. And all the women and by the wives of Srivas and his brothers fall and sticks to the ground. I understand. The Lord has opened his eyes like two blossoming lotuses looking at the color of his mercy. Lotuses that have been closed by the waves of his ecstasy. Voice deep as thunder, saying, Fix your minds on me. The Lord places his lowest feet on our heads. Tears, anxiety, trembling, coolness, bodily hairs erect, joy and intense eagerness. They are now overcome. Ecstasy. Now they're all coming here. Um, I think we should go somewhere else. Oh, friend, where do you think I should go? Friend, listen, you can stay among they who blaspheme the spotless character of Lord Chaitanya, who has learning, morality, austerity, exalted lineage, and the highest ashram. Your mate, 
lies can stay among the atheists and your son, deception, can stay among the dry impersonalists and the materialists. But don't be unhappy. As you like. Outstanding. Oh, I 
Hare Guru 